بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم والعاقبة للمتقين أما بعد respect to brothers and sisters today الحمد لله we had completed the eleventh juz and in this juz we had completed surah tauba we recited the entire surah yunus and we had uh, opened uh, up with surah hud and inshallah we'll complete that tomorrow this section that we had read today. Uh, there's two highlights that we can extract from it. Number one is the level of enthusiasm we're supposed to exercise when uh, engaging in religious activities. And number two, how we're supposed to stick to truth in every circumstance. The one thing you find here, both in Surah Tawbah and Surah Yunus combined, is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he basically sheds light on the attitude of some of those people who are trying to repel the truth and dodge the truth for lack of better words. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses the incident of uh, Tabuk. It's one of the final expeditions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this was a code read in Medina when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam received word that uh, the Caesar at that time, Heraclius, is going to send approximately 40,000 troops to annihilate the Muslims in Medina uh, based on some information he received that they're in really bad condition. And Rasulullah wasallam, when he received words of this, he was extremely serious. And you can look at the, the circumstances at that time. They weren't very favorable. The Muslims were, uh, you know, they were just coming out of a state of drought. Uh, it was just time for harvesting their dates. Uh, the heat was intense. I mean, the heat that we are experiencing here is not even a fraction of the heat that they experienced down there. So, the circumstances were not very favorable, but the emergency was very high. Rasulullah wasallam had made the decision that rather than them coming to us, we will meet them at their borders. And their border at that time in greater Syria was Tabuk. Now, you can see that there was a level of apprehension in some of the companions. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even addresses this in something that we had read yesterday. Malakum idha qila lakum unfiru fi sabilillah itha qaltum ila al ard. What's wrong with you? Okay, when you're being told to set out, set forth in the path of Allah, you're clinging to the earth. Araditum bil hayati dunya min al akhirah. Have you become content with the worldly life over the hereafter? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking directly to the Sahaba radiallahu anhu majma'in in these verses. Eventually what happens, the expedition, it takes place. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam goes with a large number of his companions. Uh, they travel hundreds of miles in the heat within the dry deserts of Arabia. And you have a group of people that stayed back. Now within that group that had gone forth, you have the people who are enthusiastic and some that almost slipped. Okay. مِن بَعْدِ مَا كَادَ يَزِيغُ قُلُوبُ فَرِيقٍ مِّنْهُمْ right? There was a group amongst the Sahaba radiallahu anhu that went with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So they almost slipped. They almost prob- probably bailed out from this. But at the end, alhamdulillah, their good conscience had gotten the better of them and they went through with this. And at the end, as they say, no pain, no gain. Everything comes with a tremendous sacrifice. And they made the ultimate sacrifice. And today, 1400 years later, we're talking about this incident on the other side of the globe, here in Canada. So the thing is, you have two groups within the Sahaba radiallahu anhu jma'in. And then you have another group of people that is divided between believers and hypocrites that decide to stay back. Now amongst the believers is three in particular. Ka'b bin Malik, Murara bin Rabi', Hilal bin Umayyah. These are sincere believers, but what happened is they procrastinated. Days went by, I said, okay, we'll just we'll get ready today, tomorrow, the day after. Eventually the thing, the the expedition, or I should say the uh, the caravan of the Prophet وسلم, it sets out and they say, okay, we'll catch up in a day, we'll catch up in two days. And next thing you know, the whole Thing is back, the whole caravan is back, the whole group is back. Now they're thinking, what are we going to do? 
they have two options. Either they can lie and basically try and get uh, excused by the Prophet Wasallam, or tell the truth. But you know what? We didn't have any excuse. And this is just uh, a lack on our behalf. They had one of two options. The munafiqeen, they decided to exercise lies, obviously. سَيَحْلِفُونَ بِاللَّهِ لَكُمْ إِذًا قَلَبْتُمْ إِلَيْهِمْ لِتُعْرِضُوا عَنْهُمْ Now look what happens as a result. Those people who have gotten themselves in trouble, and you know what? Getting ourselves in trouble is just part of being human. We are not perfect people. And we are not angels by any means whatsoever. So we will make mistakes in life. But when we make those mistakes, the wise thing to do is own up. There are going to be short-term downfalls, but the long-term is going to be very bright. Okay? So, and this is what we learn from this entire incident. So when it comes to the munafiqeen, as soon as the Prophet ﷺ comes back to Madinatul Munawwara, they're all lining up, they're giving their excuses. Ya Rasulullah, I'm telling you, things got really rough. You know, my aunts, niece, fathers, uncles, uh, sister got, got sick and you know, we had to take care of them. They're just take, making all the excuses they know in the book. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is also saying that they are going to swear oath. Sayahlifuna billah. Wallahi al-azim. You know, Quran ki qasam, ma ki qasam, and Kaaba ki qasam, everything. Uh, every single oath we know in the book. They're all throwing it out. And by the way, these types of oaths are shirk. Okay, don't say that. Okay, the only oath that we're allowed to take is on the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, they, they are going and swearing every oath in the book. And, there's, and what's the whole purpose behind them? Behind this, لِتُعْرِضُوا عَنْهُمْ So you turn away from them. You don't pick on them. You don't actually, you know, uh, hold them accountable uh, for staying back. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He makes it very clear. You know what? Give them what they want. فَأَعْرِضُوا عَنْهُمْ Just turn away from them. Because those people who are lying while taking an oath on the name of Allah, إِنَّهُمْ رِجْسِ Those people are impure. They're filthy. وَمَأْوَاهُمْ جَهَنَّمْ إِنَّهُمْ رِجْسٌ وَمَأْوَاهُمْ جَهَنَّمْ Okay, they're filthy and their abode is hell. This, you know, in the short term, they got away. The short term was bright. They lied. They got away from short term trouble only to land themselves in eternal punishment. Allah is openly announced in the Quran, وَمَأْوَاهُمْ جَهَنَّمْ It's not even speculative. Allah is openly announced it. They're going straight to hell. Okay, وَمَأْوَاهُمْ جَهَنَّمْ But when it comes to the other people, those three individuals whose name I had taken, they decided to stick to the truth and own up to the Prophet ﷺ by making it very clear we had no excuse whatsoever. Even though this was a code red, this is a very... A huge emergency the Muslim community was clearly in danger and there was no exceptions for any person in Medina to stay back they had to go with Rasulullah they just didn't come around doing it so what happens as a result yeah there are short-term consequences that short-term consequence it land it lasted for 50 50 days there was a 50-day boycott that was imposed on these three. The last 10 days, they even had to split up with their wives. Okay, so it was short-term. 50 days in comparison to eternity is nothing. So 50 days, it was a short-term downfall. But in the long term, Allah openly announces that He has forgiven them. When He's announcing who He has uh, forgiven, this is the... He, specifically mentions those three. Those three whose matter has been delayed. خُلِّفُوا And Allah then explains the situation. حَتَّى إِذَا ضَاقَتَ عَلَيْهِمُ الْأَرْضُ بِمَا رَحُبَتْ وَضَاقَتَ عَلَيْهِمْ أَنفُسُهُمْ وَظَنُّوا أَلَّا مَلْجَأَ مِنَ اللَّهِ إِلَّا إِلَيْهِ ثُمَّ تَابَ عَلَيْهِمْ لِيَتُوبُوا So they felt that the land has become so constrained upon them. ضَاقَتَ عَلَيْهِمُ الْأَرْضُ Even though it's vast. بِمَا رَحُبَتْ and not only that, وَضَاقَتْ عَلَيْهِمْ أَنفُسُهُمْ They felt so tight and constrained within themselves. It's like the whole world has caved in on them. But remember, it was only for 50 days. Now 50 days would seem like 500 years. 
for those people who are involved in this tight situation, but when looking back, it's relatively speaking a short period of time. And Allah opens, uh, openly says, ثُمَّ تَابَ عَلَيْهِمْ Allah has forgiven them. So you have the people who lied and earned Jahannam. For the short term, they got away from trouble only to land themselves in long term trouble. And then you have the people who stuck to the truth. And in the short term, they got in trouble, but in the long term, they're in the advantage. So what are we supposed to adopt? Always own up. And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala immediately after the announcing their forgiveness, He says, Ya ayyuhalladina amanu taqullah wa kunu ma'as sadiqeen. It's telling us all to be conscious of Him and to be with truthful people. We will be prompted to tell the truth when we are in the environment of truth, when we have the company of truth, when we are with people who stick to the truth. But no sooner do we depart from that type of environment and now we're involved with other types of people who, whose every sentence is a lie. Okay? Who's, who's basically, the, their, their philosophy is about cheating and deceiving because that's the only way you're going to get ahead in life. I mean, just this evening I came across a hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and this is just somewhat related to what we're discussing. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa says to the near meaning, and I'm just uh, paraphrasing, Whoever is not going to give up Lying, making false statements And then acting upon falsehood okay? Whoever is not going to give these two things up Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has no need For this person That this person gives up Eating and drinking for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's sake. Meaning when the person is fasting and he just can't get this out of his system. They just can't seem to depart from truth and adopt falsehood. And every time when they're at work, they're lying. When they're with a customer, they're deceiving. Uh, when they're with family, they're you know, somehow trying to uh, beguile that person and fool them. The Prophet ﷺ is saying that while this person is fasting, he can't give these bad habits up. Allah does not need his fast. Allah doesn't need him to stay hungry and thirsty. So what we need to do is incorporate truth in every single circumstance, even if it's going to hurt us in the short term. But keep this in mind, in the long term, everything is going to be bright. And finally, finish off with this, is that we don't want to be in a position where we are dodging the truth. We're dodging spirituality. Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has uh, given us the ability to stay here in these you know, late hours of the night, to stand in prayer, listen to talks and so forth. Sometimes we might get caught up in uh, the swing of things, as they say. You know, the people are having a good time, apparently. And we say, you know, if they're having a good time, I want to have a good time as well. And you know the spirituality it can wait. Inshallah, Hajj karne ke baad ham nek ho jayenge. Okay, after we do Hajj, then we'll become all pious and we'll delay Hajj to our 50s and 60s. Okay, and that's the worst mistake we can make nowadays, I'm telling you. So long as you're young and, you've, and Hajj is obligatory, please just go ahead and do it. Okay, don't wait. Because uh, being in your 60s, or even your early 70s and going into a crowd of 4 million people, that's not going to be a picnic. Okay, so that's one thing. Another philosophy is that, inshallah, after we retire, after 63, and I think it's going to become 65 very soon, right? So after 65, then we'll become naked, inshallah, then we'll go to the corner of the masjid and do Allah, Allah and all that stuff. And we don't even know if we're going to live to see tomorrow. Or, inshallah, after I establish my career, I've got these milestones and I've got to accomplish these milestones. And after that, inshallah, I will become all pious. These are delusions from shaitan. This is the exact same mistake Fir'aun had made. This is the exact same mistake the people of the Quraysh had made. You can see the two parallels here. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He talks about Fir'aun. When now He's... He knows it's, it's it, it's over, it's finished. 
Uh, prior to this, the signs that were coming his way, whether it be a storm, whether it be lice, whether it be frogs, whether it be liquid turning into blood, whatever the case is, the nine signs that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent, you know, that was coming in the form of calamity, he would approach Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, literally. I mean, it's in the Quran. He would summon Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. Ya sahir. He would call Prophet Musa alayhi salatu a magician and he would tell him to make dua to Allah. Okay? Ud'u lana rabbaka bima ahida indak. You know, due to that confidence and that agreement that you have with your Lord, please make dua to your God to get this condition away from us because my sovereignty, my kingdom is, in, is, is in basically at stake. So ask your God to relieve us of this situation. And then he would make a promise. La in kashafta an the rich. Listen, let's make a deal. Okay? Handshake. Okay, if you want this written down, we'll probably write it down as well. But listen, La in kashafta an the rich. If you can remove this condition from us, we will believe in you. La nuk minanna lak. Wala nur silanna ma'aka bani Israel. And you know you want the children of Israel, right? You want these people to be released. Don't worry. I'll just flick my fingers and it'll be done. But just get this over and done with. When this condition has now been removed from them, what happens? They break their promise, they go back to their old ways. And this didn't happen just once, it happened not even twice, three times or four times, it happened multiple times. So basically, Fir'aun has already acknowledged in the depths of his heart that there is a God. And he's seeking that God's help indirectly through Musa alayhi salatu salam that you make dua. And then finally when he knows it's over, game's over, now he's saying, قَالَ آمَنْتُ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا الَّذِي آمَنَتْ بِهِ بَنُوا إِسْرَائِيلِ وَأَنَا مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ Okay, now he declares that I believe in the God of the children of Israel and I'm amongst the Muslims. And immediately he's being told, al and now? I mean, it's all over now. Okay, time's up. I mean, you were just causing corruption all the time. You were always disobedient. But you know what? Let's do something. We will save your body. And we'll put, on, uh, put it on display for the entire world to see that that individual who said that I'm the biggest of all gods and Rabbukum al A'la is nothing but a pathetic bag of bones today. Go and see. Okay, so basically the biggest mistake we can do is just to dodge, make mistake, or make excuses, and then finally when the time comes for us to act, it's too late. Okay, so inshallah, what we want to do, going away from here today, is first and foremost, we make the, the, the solemn, or I should say, we make a proper resolution, that inshallah, we're going to stick to the truth in all circumstances, even if we make a mistake, we will own up inshallah, even if it uh, is going to come at the expense of our convenience for a short period of time, we will own up. And inshallah, the long-term future is going to be bright. And when it comes to our spirituality, let's not compromise anymore, inshallah. Let's embrace it wholeheartedly, fully, completely immerse ourselves into it today, not tomorrow, because today is the time to act, tomorrow is the time to reap the rewards when we go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah give us all the ability to understand and practice upon what has been said. Subhanallah bihamdi, subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik, nashidu wa la ilaha illa ant, nastaghfiruka wa